me relying on some notes here. Um, I am in the midst of menopausal brain fog. Um, it is a real thing, um, so do forgive me if I keep sort of looking down. Um, as Catherine said, uh, my name's Debbie. Um, I set up this organisation, Fair Treatment for the Women of Wales, FTWW, uh, about five years ago now. And originally, it was just it was just a Facebook support group. Um, and I set it up on the back of my own experiences and battle with a condition called endometriosis, which is actually a really common condition affecting one in ten girls and women across the world. Um, and it's a, a gynecological condition, it's characterised by, mainly by pelvic pain, but can also cause fertility, organ dysfunction, quite a lot of horrible issues for many women. Um, so basically this Facebook group came about because of that and because I'd spent so many years battling to get across the border to a specialist in the condition. And I should point out that there are no specialists currently in North Wales, only one in the whole of Wales in fact, one centre down in Cardiff. Um, and so, so that's how it all began. Um, and I hadn't intended at any point in my life to be an advocate for women's health quality. It wasn't something I'd envisaged when I was just trundling about my life, you know, as you do. And I think a lot of campaigns start like that, when you have lived experience yourself, um, and you suddenly realise that there's something not quite right, there's, there's an inequality, there's an unfairness, and so that's how, how I started off. Um, and I suppose it started um, when I was very, very young. Um, my symptoms began about 26 26 years ago or more, 30 years ago, I can't even remember now, you know, as I said, menopause or brain fog. Um, but basically, they were, they were symptoms where I was going backwards and forwards to the doctors and I was saying, you know, I've got really bad stomachache all the time, I've got bowel problems all the time. And, you know, looking back now with my feminist hat on, um, I wish that I'd sort of challenged them more when they were saying to me, don't worry, tummy pain is normal in girls. Pelvic pain is normal in women. You're just stressed. You're just anxious. You need to calm down a bit. Then you'll be fine. So looking back now, I really wish that I'd said more about that. But, you know, when you're unwell and you're in that, that GP surgery, we're kind, of, we're kind of brought up to listen to what we're being told and we accept what we're being told and we don't question it. And I think that's even more the case when it's a gynecological problem because we don't like to talk about periods and we don't like to talk about bowel movements and we don't like to talk about painful sex and all of those sorts of things. They're, they're kind of taboo um, and I think in large part that really does contribute to, in Wales, the nine year diagnostic delay for endometriosis. Um, so I suppose you know, we've been invited here tonight to talk about you know, women for change. What would we like to see change? Um, and for me, one of the big issues at, issues at the moment is that um, in England, they've now agreed to put menstrual well-being on the curriculum from 2020. Um, and my question is, well, what about Wales's girls? We don't want our girls and boys being left behind and, and knowledge about these things. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that I'm meeting with Kirsty Williams, the Education uh, Secretary, coming up in June, where I'm going to be very firmly impressing that upon her. Um, I do believe very strongly that um, we have to start talking and destigmatizing these issues because if we don't, then girls and, women, girls and women will continue to remain silent about them and that means that we'll continue to have disparity in care and that we'll continue to be sort of tarred with those stereotypes about being melodramatic and oversensitive, hysterical, all those sorts of things. So um, I think talking is really, really important. And that was one of the reasons why I gave FTWW the kind of quite all-encompassing general name that I did. Because certainly in Wales, um, there are problems around accessing specialist services. Um, and that's not just for women, that's, that's irrespective of sex or gender. We, we, we have um, a system in Wales where there are seven quite autonomous health boards and basically they kind of provide the services that they feel are necessary for their population. And that does mean that there can be variation in what people are experiencing and disparity in care. Um, for girls and women, there are, as I've mentioned, additional barriers to accessing best care. 
Um, and then there are, as I've mentioned already, taboos around gynaecology, the normalisation of pelvic pain, stereotypes about our psyche and our personality. Um, and also things to do with, you know, the amount of research investment um, that, that women's health conditions tend to attract. Um, although our organisation isn't just about endometriosis, <coughs> excuse me, it provides a really good example because, like diabetes, it affects one in ten. And they both have a similar burden on the economy and on individuals' quality of life. And yet, endometriosis attracts around 69 pence per sufferer per year in research, compared to 26 pounds and 88 pence per person suffering with diabetes per year. So essentially, what I would like to see, why I am a woman for change, is um, I'd like to see us challenging those sometimes but not always unconscious biases which prevent girls and women getting the best treatment they need in a timely fashion. And I'd also, um, in a sort of lowercase p, political level, start challenging those barriers that we have in Wales to accessing decent care. Thank you.